As a freelance animator, a question I get asked often is, what program do you use to create your animations? Personally, I have mainly used Autodesk Maya to create my animations. It's the program I am the most comfortable with and it produces some of my best work. But as a freelancer, money can be tight. So I'm excited to introduce Autodesk's newest tool, Maya Creative. And I'm pretty excited to show you some of the ways I use Maya and a new way you can save some money using this program. So first and foremost, thanks to Autodesk, the sponsor of this video, they have been kind enough to show me a preview of my creative. And side note, this is actually like a dream come true for me uh, to work with a company uh, on a program that I've used for so long. All things aside, you guys know that I've used Maya here on the channel to show animation tutorials, animations, and my workflow. So to work with them now is actually really blowing my mind, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, but back to my creative. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the price. So Maya Creative is a new, more sh affordable, streamlined version of Maya um, that focuses much more on animation, modeling, and rendering. Uh, and it's available only through Autodesk Flex. What is Autodesk Flex? Flex is a pay-as-you-go option for daily product use. You'll be able to purchase a set of tokens, and depending on how you use Maya, tokens will be deducted every day you use it until you run out of tokens. So if a regular Maya license is like a theme park admission to use Maya for like a year, Maya Creative is like an arcade David Buster style where you only pay if you use it. So when I first opened Maya Creative, I was actually really excited to interact with the animation learning tool. It's an interactive game that teaches you the basics of the UI, modeling, lighting, and animation. I've really never seen anything like this before. Usually you would need to take a course or watch a bunch of tutorials in order to learn the program. But here you're introduced to an interactive robot who walks you through how to use the program video game style. Like if you imagine like the first part of any video game, this is pretty much basically the same thing. It's a really nice setup, I'm not gonna lie, than having to rely on a teacher or a program or you know some side-by-side -side basis if you're brand new. So if you are new to animation or even my, you can learn right here in the program on how to use some of these basic features. So another new thing I wanted to talk about is the cache playback. This lets you see changes made to your animation immediately, so it virtually removes the need to do a play blast. Depending on your computer build and the complexity of the scene, the playback for Maya rarely runs at the frames per second you want. So before you had to run a play blast just to see what it would look like and even then creating those at a time to your workflow. Now you can pre-render or cache your scene so that Maya can run the animation at the correct speed. If you were to make any change to the animation, it would reload and update the cache. This really speeds up your workflow and it's a huge advantage to animators. Though it's quick and you're probably used to playblasting, being able to have the accurate speed during your playback makes it much easier to make adjustments on the fly for some faster turnaround times. And now that brings me to the blue pencil. Blue pencil is the new upgraded tool of the Maya Grease pencil which lets artists and animators create 2D drawings and annotations in the viewport. It offers much more drawing tools for text and shapes and it's great for blocking or critiquing a scene if you're working with a team. Usually we would have to upload to a site like SyncSketch to critiquing this scene, so it's very interesting that you can now do something like this right inside of Maya. So what's really cool is that you can export these frames so if you have a mentor or someone who's drawing over these frame sequences, you can just actually just send them the whole Maya scene. And instead of them sending the whole scene back with the annotations with the blue pencil, you can just export the frames of the blue pencil and the student can import those annotations into the scene to make it easier to go back and forth. So the next thing I want to talk about is the ghosting editor. The ghosting editor lets you create images that echoes the animation, letting you visualize the movement and position of the animated objects over time. Ghosting isn't new in Maya, so before, if you went to visualize ghost selected, you'd be able to see your ghost, but now, with the ghosting editor, you are not able to customize exactly how you want to see your ghost. Whether you want to see the animations on twos, on threes, or even every frame, you can do so. You can change the color, change exactly how many characters you have in the ghost, and turn them on and off as you go. Personally, I like this better than a graph editor in certain situations because it kind of gives you a much more clearer visual way to see your curves and edits you need to make. 
And if you combine that with the Clash playback, you can see right in your editor the flow of your animation and if you need to make any changes. Now, there's so many reasons as to why I believe that Maya is a great fit for animators, but if I were to go through all of them, this video would be like 30 minutes long and I wanted to take some time to talk about who my creative is best used for. The first thing is that while all of that flex in a sense is a cheaper way to afford Maya, it is best for freelancers who need to use Maya once in a while versus your daily program. Or if you're in an organization with a small team that needs to use the fully licensed version of Maya. If you're a solo user or if you wanna learn animation to be able to apply for jobs and you qualify for Maya Indie, I would still recommend that over Maya Creative. I know Maya Indie is limited to some reasons, so if it's not available for you, then this is definitely the best alternative. But I do feel like if you lean towards like the hobbyist, animator, want to create my own thing version of Maya, Maya Indie would work best. But if you are like in the freelance, depending on how often you get jobs that you may need to use Maya for, or if you're trying to create your own game and you need to go ahead and license Maya out, to your other animators on your team, then this would probably be the best for you. Also, my creative doesn't come with dynamics or effects, so if you're a VFX artist, look towards my indie as well. I'm really excited for the new changes coming to mind. I wanted to say thank you again to Autodesk for providing me with the preview release, along with the fact to answer any questions you may have. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.